So we're recording. This is whoa. There, that's better. <laughs> I was writing somewhere else. So this is V three. Ah. All right. Okay. So recording again. This is week three, lecture two. So today we'll actually start rotational uh, mechanical systems. So just a couple of things though before that. Uh, number one, I'll return your graded homeworks one and two. The only thing I noticed is when you do MATLAB, I need the code. Okay. Uh, need code. I didn't take off points for homework two. I won't take off points for homework three as well, but some some of you gave me the code, some of you didn't, but I need to see the code. Right? Either print it out uh, or take screenshots, whatever. Okay. So that's point number one. Point number two is recall from last time that we had this uh, system of equations for the mechanical system. And I said that we will derive the transfer function algebraically instead of using the matrix. So what were the system of equations? Was it S squared, do you remember, plus 3S plus 1 times X1 minus 3 times S plus 1 times X2? I don't know. I'm just, and this has to be minus 3S plus 1 times X1 plus uh, S squared plus 4S plus 1 times X2 equals 0. Was this it or? Okay. So let me know. So if I made a mistake in this, it's 1 and 2. All right. So to solve it algebraic, there are many ways to do this. So here's the algebra. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Can I add it? Can I subtract it? So, so the transfer function, by the way, we want is what? X2 over S? X2 over F? I'm sorry. Was this it? So we want to eliminate X1. Uh, so this is what we want. Therefore, this implies eliminate X1 in 1 and 2. So to do this, so 1 implies that X1 is F plus 3s plus 1 x2 all over s squared plus 3s plus 1. So let's call this 3. So 3 in 2 implies minus 3s plus 1 over s squared plus 3s plus 1 times f of s. I'll just be more specific. 3s plus 1 x2 of s. Um, Hold on, this is right, but I'll just put this in here. This is the correct substitution. Okay? So just take this, stick it in here, and now solve for x2. Okay? 1, x2 equals 0. All right? And this is just algebra from now on. So this is just algebra. And I'm not going to do this because I need to, I want to cover the rotational mechanical systems. But on the exam, even if I give you a 2 by 2, it won't be too algebraically involved. Okay. Most likely I won't. I'll probably just give you like a 3 by 3. I'll just ask you to set up, set this up and just leave it. Okay. So the things you got to watch out for here are what are the components connecting the different degrees of freedom? Point number one. Point number two is the signs. Okay. So as more practice, let's look at section 2.6 from your book, which is rotational mechanical systems. Now on an aside, your exam one is next week. Okay, It's next Friday, week four, Friday of week four, uh, rotational mechanical system transfer functions. And exam one is actually pretty simple in the sense, you just have to be careful of the sign and you just have to practice. Okay, Exam two and later will become more, it'll become more interesting in the sense you have to think from then on, this exam one is just mundane, right? So you, 
usually students should get like the average should be around like 90%. Okay, so just avoid like stupid mistakes and then it should not be difficult. So let's look at rotational mechanical systems. This is table 25 on page 70. Okay, I'll go to the next page. I'm just going to draw this out because I don't want to copy and paste it because it's useful to look at this. Here are com rotational components. Here are the time domain equations. Here are the S domain equations. So Z of S is defined to be the torque over theta. So here, if you want, uh, the rotational analog, anal, it's wrong. what's the rotational analog of force? Is what and what's the rotational analog of displacement so this linear displacement x so the rotational analog of linear displacement x what is it so what's the rotational analog of force and what's the rotational analog of linear displacement ah. What's the rotational analog of force? Torque. Yeah. What's the rotational analog of linear displacement? What's the rotational analog? The equivalent, that's what analog means. So force is torque, what's x? Angle, is angular displacement. And what is the angular displacement? What are the SI units of torque? What are the SI units? Wait. Yes, it's Newton meters. Chris is right. right. Because tau is defined as, tau is a vector, just like force, R cross F, right? Where F is the applied um, force, you don't want to say linear force, and R is the radial distance from the axis of rotation. Okay. So tau is newton meters. What is the symbol for angular displacement? Linear displacement is x. What is it for angular displacement? Theta. And the units here are obviously radians. Okay. Radian. Okay. All right. So let's look at the rotational components. So the first one is the equivalent of the, the torsional spring, the equivalent of the linear spring or the analog of the linear spring. So here is k. Now, something about notation. I'm going to put this in the time domain first. So in math, counterclockwise is positive. Okay. So the way this rotation you have to visualize is you're looking at the way I visualize is I'm looking at the axis of rotation from left to right. Because if you look at it like this, you can see that it's counterclockwise, yes? that It's actually not implied here if this direction is clockwise or counterclockwise, but I take it as counterclockwise because it's positive, all right? So, so you're looking at it from here. So I mean, go, go to this way and look at the spring, all right? So you apply a torque in the counterclockwise direction. The spring is gonna torque in the counterclockwise direction, yes? So if you look at it from this way, it's clockwise. It, it really doesn't matter, like in the sense, the point is, it's a torsional spring, that's the point. Okay. So then, tau of, uh, there's actually capital tau, right? Tau of t is k times theta of d, t, sorry. Notice f equals kx, right? Yes, same thing. And the, so what is s domain? Tau of s is k times theta of s, so the impedance is what? k. What are the SI units of k? Huh? Uh, is it newtons per meter? No, 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 it's not. So what are the SI units of torque? Newton meter, yes. What are the SI units of theta? Radians. 
So what should K be? So you get Newton meters on the left hand side. Yeah, it is Newton meter per radian. So there's no other way to write it. Okay. That's the SI unit. Newton meter per radian. Okay. Uh, well, that's the the point of having the SI units of torque as Newton meters is to show you that it's the rotational analog of force. It's it's generated by a linear force. Okay. It's not really force. So you don't talk about torques for translational systems. So how about this? A torque is a convenient way to represent quote unquote forces for rotational systems. Right? That's that's about it. Okay, then there's the dampener. So this guy again. So analogously, uh, D. So what is the time domain equation? Torque of as a function of time is equal to what? D times what? What do you have on here? Sorry? Yeah, theta dot. Yes, d theta dt. Just same like linear. Oh, sorry, uh, linear, same like translational motion. So T of S is S D. Oh, on, I'll write it like this, okay? D S theta of S. Again, if you want to have the um, electrical analog that this dampener is actually equivalent to the resistor, then you have to define your impedance as torque over velocity. Is that clear? But we don't do that. This is angular velocity. What's the symbol for angular velocity? Little omega, right? What's the symbol for angular acceleration? You remember? What's the symbol for angular acceleration? It's alpha. I remember that some of the torques equals I alpha. Some of the force equals mass times acceleration. So angular acceleration is given by alpha. Anyway, what are these? So this is D. The SI units are obviously Newton meter per radians per second. And your book writes Newton meter second per radian. I write it as Newton meter per radians per second. Okay. So just, just so I know like how it works. And here is our final friend, which is the moment of inertia, J. What are the, okay, well, I'll ask you this later when we get to it. So here is going to be J, theta double dot, okay? So that means T of S is going to be J, S squared theta S. Uh, remember, we're assuming zero initial conditions. What are the SI units of J, the moment of inertia? So this is the rotational analog of mass. What are the SI units of moment of inertia? I mean, you could say it's Newton meter second squared per radian. Yes. But what is that equivalent to from physics? You've heard about this in physics, right? I, moment of inertia. You remember what you measured it in? So, okay. It's Newton meter second squared per radian, okay? So what is that? So this is equivalent to, have you heard of this? Kilogram meter squared. You ever heard of this in physics? Yeah, so it's kilogram meter squared. Okay. Anyway, so it's all like, it's very, very analogous to translational mechanical motion. So let's do a couple of problems. In the last lecture of this week, what we'll do is we'll do some more advanced problems, okay? Which will combine both rotational and translational motion. Yeah, question? Mm-hmm. 
Where? Here? Here? Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I messed up the... Um, so this is supposed to be SD. This is supposed to be S squared J. Sorry, I forgot the SS. Thank you. It's because I was thinking about torque versus velocity. So this is SD, S squared J. Thank you. Great. Okay, so let's do a skill assessment exercise for this one. And then again, starting on Friday, we'll do like a couple of more problems. I won't do all the problems from the back of the book, which involve both mechanical and translational, which involve both translational mechanical motion and rotational mechanical motion. I'll do some of them. The others you should practice, so you get the hang of it. Right? We will combine um, the elect definitely electrical and rotational, electrical systems and rotational systems when you look at the DC motor, okay? Because we'll have the electric component of the motor and then we'll have the rotating shaft, yes? However, that, that DC motor can be coupled to a translational mechanical system. It will be, as you will see, through um, gears, okay? But let's just look do a skill assessment exercise for now. Da, da, da. Modeling in the frequency domain 78. Hello. There. All right, not yet. Eight. Electromechanical systems. Oh, yeah, here's 210. Ah, two nine. Okay, there it is. Oh, your book also uses kilogram meter squared, so I'll also use kilogram meter squared. Much easier to write. Take a snapshot. I will leave the answer out for now. So this is on page seventy-four. Okay, so find the transfer function g of s equals theta 2 of s, which is over here, over t of s for the rotational mechanical system shown. Okay. Now, something important, so this is the problem. Okay. Something important about this problem is looking at this, do we have all the degrees of freedom? Like I said on the first exam, I'll mark all the degrees of freedom. But in this problem, let's see, let's get into the habit of trying to figure out how many degrees of freedom this systems have. So looking at this, does it have all the, has all the degrees of freedom been included here? How many rotation shafts are there? Two. Where's the second one? Well, the, here, that's already there. So, think. So this shaft takes care, well, this is a spring that's fixed on one end, torsional spring, okay? So this is one shaft, same thing with the damper, this is the other shaft. Is there any other shaft that can move independently of this shaft? That's what you have to look at. Connor's right, there are two. Where's the second one? Right here, like Chris said, right? You see that if I hold this, if I prevent this from rotating, I can still rotate this, yes? So again, on the first exam, I'll give you all the degrees of freedom, but starting with the exam two on the final, you have to get into the habit of doing this. And the best way you'll spot this is through practice and visualization, right? But you see how I spotted it, right? I held this down, put a, stuck a nail in there, right? So it doesn't move, but I can still rotate. Oops, I can still rotate this, right? If I apply a torque, yes? Which direction does this guy 
spin in the same direction as the torque, right? So if you look in, like from here, that you're staring at it, so I apply a torque, it's counterclockwise, yes? Let's call this theta one of t. Is that clear? All right, so now that you have identified all the degrees of freedom, question, if you have a question, ask, right? You see how it is rotating this way? Yes? Because I mean, I'm looking at it from here, right from this, like from here. So I apply a torque, so this is the shaft, right? I apply the torque, rotates like this. But there is a dampener, inertia, and actually, in some ways, if you can think about these as, let's say there's a rod, okay, this axis. You can think about this moment of inertia as the moment of inertia of the rod. That's how we'll actually model, for example, the DC motor. Okay, let's say the DC motor has a rotating shaft. The moment of inertia will be the moment of inertia associated with the shaft. Okay. Is it clockwise? Yeah, it's clockwise. Sorry. It's clockwise, right, looking in here? Yeah, it's clockwise. Huh? Sorry? Yeah, it all depends on how you, where you look at it from, but I was looking at it through here, like from left to right. No. See, I'm looking at it like this. Whatever, it's clockwise, I think, okay? The point is this is in the same direction as the torque. All right. That's the main point. Okay, so that means we're going to write uh, two equations of motion, okay? So what you can do is, okay, let me draw the free body diagram, if you will. So here's the free body diagram. So it's the same thing as uh, translational mechanical motion, right? So step one is, okay, solution, draw FBD, free body diagram, and use superposition. So that means first one is torques on theta one or in J one, if you will. Here it is. Uh, okay, let me put J one. Let me keep it analogous to due to the motion of theta one alone uh, due to the motion of J one alone. And on this shaft, you can think about a zero moment of inertia here, if you will, right? If you want to really uh, think about, I mean, if you want to really write like this, but then what I'll do is I'll write torques on J1 due to the motion of theta 2. So in this case, J2 is equal to zero kilogram meter per square, second kilogram meter squared alone. All right, so let's just write out the expressions. And the torques due to this, 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 it'll oppose this motion, yes? Just like a translational mechanical system. So let me zoom out. Let's start writing this. So this is at theta one, okay? So let's write it in the S domain. So what do you get? This times theta one, okay? This times theta two equals torque. Yes? And let's make all this in the S domain. Okay, theta one of S. All right. So, what are the different rotational impedances that oppose this motion here? This is fixed. Again, let's call this J1. That's what I used. Uh, let's call this uh, K1. Let's call this D1. Let's call this D2. Let's call this K2. Okay. Remember, put the symbols first, then plug in the numbers. Is that clear? All right, so go. So at theta one, tell me the S domain expression. All 
I'll start with uh, Connor's right, but start with the highest order po power of S. S squared J1. That's it. Is that clear? So these are the impedances that is going to oppose this rotational motion. Uh, this rotational motion, right? Now, so you're looking at the torques exerted on J1 when this rotates. This shaft is fixed. Imagine this is nailed down, right? It's not you're not rotating. Now, when I rotate this, these two are the appropriate impedances. They are going to oppose this motion, okay? But they're going to try to rotate this guy. So, in other words, there's going to be a negative sign here, and it's going to be what? S D1 plus K. Is that clear? Same thing as translation, just rotation. Equals applied torque on this shaft. So let me leave this up for a little bit. And I screwed up. This should be K1. There's no K. So at theta 2, okay? Uh, so it's going to be very similar in the sense that, well, let me relabel this. So this is number two, torques on theta two here, J, there is no J2, due to motion of J1 alone, okay, this is torques on J2. Well, on theta 2, due to the motion of theta 2 alone, okay, so that, that so if we're writing it at theta 2, so it's negative SD1 plus K1 times theta 1 of S, okay, plus, now what about this guy? So, assuming this is fixed, when I rotate this, just be very careful, okay? What are the impedances that oppose this motion? Just tell me what they are. In symbols, tell me what they are. You don't have to tell me the S-domain expression. Ah, I said be careful. Is D2 the only dampener that opposes it? No, we accounted for D1 when theta 1 is rotating. Yes? See, this, again, that's why I said be careful, right? This D1 influence is when this guy is rotating, yes? But when theta 2 is rotating, what are all, and this is fixed, what are all the impedances that oppose the motion on here? There are two dampeners and two springs. Is that very clear? It's a common mistake which students make, and just be mindful, right? Just be careful. Don't be like, oh, yeah, I took care of... Just look at it. It's easy to make this mistake. It's a very... Silly mistake which a lot of students make. Is this clear? When this rotates, not only this guy opposes it, this guy also opposes it. So does this spring and this torsional spring. Yes? So then what do you get here is S times D1 plus D2 plus K1 plus K2 times theta 2 of S equals 0. There is no applied torque on this guy. Okay? And you lose a lot of points if you miss out on D2, okay? Because there's no way for me to tell if you don't understand it or you made a silly mistake, right? Yeah, D1 or D2. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, please, and they don't cry then I lost so many points. Oh, all right. So this is actually the first exam is where you either get 100 or you get like 50 because of silly mistakes, right? So and it's easy to avoid this if you practice okay. and the only reason I spotted it is because I practiced and I mean I didn't spot it here okay all right so now what I'm gonna do is so we'll plug in the numbers I'm gonna solve this the non matrix way so what's he asking us theta 2 over T so we have to eliminate theta 1 okay well let's plug in numbers I think they're all magnitude 1 yes yeah, they're all magnitude one, super. 
So I'm, just trying, I'm not even going to go back and check. So this implies that, uh oh. So why don't you guys start writing it? Let me plug in the power and then I'll continue. Let me pause the lecture. Hello. Continuing. So doing the algebra, were you all able to get this? Yes? So if you can't, you have to work on it algebra because this is an example of some computations I can give on the exam. Okay, this is a, actually a very good example. So this one, you should be able to simplify, unlike the last translational mechanical system, you should be able to simplify this without much difficulty. Yeah. On the exam, if I give you a two by two and ask you to find the transfer function, it'll be like this, simplification wise. Okay. All right, so we're done with rotational systems and this is nothing more, right? Next time, that is, whenever our next class is, which I believe is Friday after this. Yes, no, yes, yes, it's on Friday. So we'll do this problem, okay? This is not assigned in your homework. It involves both rotational and translational. The hint in this problem is the torque here causes the, tra also, also causes a force on this mass, okay? In addition, the external force is applied here. So in other words, what's, what's happening is, just imagine a shaft being placed on top of this mass, okay? As I pull this mass to the right, how does the system move? Or what are the dynamics of the system? That's the question, okay? So we'll look at this next time. So give a couple of days, think about it, right? And I was planning to start gears next time, but I put a star because it turns out that we are actually done for everything till exam one, which is only next Friday, okay? Exam one will cover sections 2.1 through 2.7. It is 2.7 gears. Okay, how about this? Let's do, uh, yeah, 2.7 is geared systems. So let me just start gears next time, okay? Yeah. So, and that's about it. So next week, you have two homeworks due, homeworks four and five. So the exam one, which is next Friday, will cover everything up till homeworks four and five, right? Including. So yeah, that's about it. So we're actually ahead in the syllabus. So what I'll do is next week, I might actually start the DC motor because it involves a lot of stuff. It involves like physical modeling. You really have to understand what's going on. So let me just start the DC motor next week. We have a review session uh, next Wednesday. So next Monday, I'll actually start the DC motor. Again, the DC motor is not going to be included on the exam. And your syllabus actually says DC servo motors. We're not going to do servos. In the sense, servos when you put feedback around it. Okay. We'll do that towards the end of like towards the end of the course. So that gets into your 3720, which you will do feedback control. Okay. But next time we'll do, so go look at this example problem. Again, you're applying a tr force here. You're pulling this mass to the right. The spring is going to oppose it, of course, okay? So what is this? Uh, and of course, there's also friction here. There is friction at the interface. So there is the inertia, but in addition, there's gonna be a torque generated, yes? So you just gotta think about this. It's a very nice problem. So we'll look at this and start gears. Okay, we'll actually start and finish gears. There's nothing big about it. So then next Monday, we'll do a lot of problems. Next Wednesday will be the review session. And then next Friday, your Friday of week four will be at exam one, which covers up to and including gears. It's basically homeworks four and five, right? All right, so that's it. We're done.